Welcome to Updates from the Field, produced by HeartCry Missionary Society. Hello, uh, we're back once again with the Missionary Update. Of course, my name is Paul Washer and this is the HeartCry Missionary Society. Today, I am privileged to be here with three very special guests. Uh, the first one here is, is Julio from East Timor. That's shares an island with Indonesia, so that kind of gives you an idea where it is in the world. And then I'm here with, of course, Austin and Brandon from St. Rose Community Church in New Orleans. And um, the name St. Rose is not because they're uh, venerating the St. Rose, it's actually the name of the town where they live, name of the city. And um, let's see now, uh, Brandon, you're an elder there, yes. is that correct? And uh, you were an elder, but now you're tra you've transferred to another ministry, Austin, or what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm just serving as a, uh, a member. Of okay, yeah. but you have aspirations to maybe join our brother Julio, is that correct, in yes, Indonesia? Yeah. Or East Timor? East Timor, yes. Okay, yeah. but first I want to talk to you, brother. Just give us an idea of when were you converted and how were you converted? So... Um, for the first time, I uh, went to Indonesia to study uh, uh, geography, specifically mm -hmm. like I studied, that, that way I studied uh, GIS, mm -hmm. uh, Geo Information System, and I finished the bachelor's degree and then I moved back to Timor-Leste. Mm -hmm. One of my brother, uh, his name is Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, he's a um, uh, hard crime miss missionary. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, at the Timor Leste, uh, right. no, so I help him at the church, and we start with the church uh, church planting and it's called Gethsemane Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. uh, we just uh, planned 2018, and at the time um, I met uh, Matthew Glass, mm -hmm. and with the mission trip that come came over with uh, Pastor Brandon and Austin and all team. They come to teach in Timor-Leste. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's how you got involved with Heart Cry. Yes. Okay. How were you converted? How did you come to know the Lord? Uh, so it's a long story, but uh, so first is from my brother Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, he know Christ from a uh, missionary that they, uh, at, at the beginning, he is kind of far from us uh, at the time. And I'm staying with my, uh, my mom and my dad. And my brother Francisco bring a uh, gospel, Jesus Christ. First, he's talked to me, and uh, the beginning, I'm, I'm start to to listen mm -hmm. and to know to know who is the Christ at the beginning. Uh, but uh, I don't understand because at the time we don't have a Bible that really talk about like uh, scripture, really talk about Jesus Christ. So um, the first and second time when Cisco come again and talk about Jesus Christ. And at the time, I, I, I believe mm -hmm. um, and start reading um, scripture. Uh, at the time, is uh, scripture not, not really in tatun, tatun in my language. That's your language. Yeah, but it's in half Indonesia and half English. I don't know about uh, English at the time, but <laughs> I know a little bit in, in Indonesia language. So I read in New Testament, uh, in, in Indonesian language, and from at that time, I mean, God lead me, and He saw Himself through Scripture that mm -hmm. I read, through Bible study that I'm with my brother Cisco, mm -hmm. and two thousand uh, two thousand six, I got the baptized. Amen. Yeah, I want to say something here that it is amazing how God's providence can work, even when there's a the scriptures are sparse or even non-existent in a language, God still in his power can convert souls. But it should be a wake up call to all of us that there is still such a need for Bible translation done by men and women who fear the Lord and want to correctly translate the scriptures so that men can not only study it, but also expound it. Now, what have you been doing here in the United States for the last few years? So last few years, I came 2000, uh, 
2020. 2020? Uh, that was before COVID uh, pandemic happened. Right. Yeah. So three months before I came and uh, I'm here to uh, training and study. Uh, right now I'm in a New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary mm -hmm. uh, specific uh, for pastoral ministry mm -hmm. uh, in uh, New Orleans. Amen. Yeah. And, that, and then you'll go back to be yes. a trained yeah. missionary. Yeah, I pray for it. And next year, I'll be going back to Timor-Leste to start teaching and mission in Timor-Leste. Now, he's not on the screen right now, but Matt Glass, a heart cry missionary, yes. he played a big role in all of this. And um, he'll be working with you also yes. when you go back. Now. Everyone needs to know why you two are sitting here. Yeah. So Brandon, can you explain to me how, what happened here? How did you get in this relationship with, uh, you're in New Orleans, and yet you got in a relationship with people so far away? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you'd asked me six years ago what Timor Leste was, I wouldn't have even known where it was on a map. Um, but about six years ago to seven years ago, we, we, uh, we started a church in New Orleans, St. Rose Community Church, um, had the, the blessed opportunity to, to start a church in an old church building. A church had shut down in St. Rose, First Baptist mm -hmm. Church, and we had the opportunity to start from scratch, a small group of people. I was a 24-year-old being sent out to, to plant a church. <laughs> um, now, how many years ago was this? Uh, this was seven. I'm 31 now. Okay. So, yeah. So Old praise, man now. Praise, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Praise God for His grace. <laughs> uh, over the last seven years, we've just seen the Lord work mm -hmm. mightily in our church, but we knew from the early days uh, we were a handful, about 15 people planting this church. We knew we wanted to be about inter international missions from the beginning, but didn't know where to start, had little resources, and just began to, to pray in, a, in our prayer services on Sunday night, asking the Lord where he would have us serve and how he would have us invest into the nations. And we had one church member in that core team that actually spoke Indonesian. He had done study abroad in Indonesia, so we said, well, that makes sense to be a good start to start praying in that direction. Uh, we had someone visit our church from another church um, uh, and ask how they could serve us uh, as a church plant. And uh, they had a wristband on their, the, on their wrist of an Indonesian unreached people group uh, that their church was trying to embrace. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, the way you can serve us is let us join you on a, on a trip yes. so uh -huh. we can get started and figure out what God wants. So we went to Indonesia with this other church from Mississippi. And through that, we met a translator uh, who was a heart cry translator, and she was uh, she amazed us with her theology and uh, her spirituality. Her name is Vera. And yeah, I think she had been discipled by Matt and his wife that's right. in we, their church. We yeah. asked yeah. her, where in the world were you discipled? And she said, by my pastor Matt. And mm -hmm. uh, we said, well, we want to talk to him. We, she connected us on a phone call while we were there, and we called Matt. Our, our hearts were knitted together, and we said, hey, we're a young church plant. We're small, but how in the world can we serve you? Yeah. And Matt said, well, there's an opportunity on an island called Timor-Leste, and I'm going to take a trip and teach the Bible. Can you bring a group and teach the Bible with me? And the rest is kind of history. We've been five or six times yeah. now and met Julio over the yeah. course of that uh, yeah. ministry there. And Austin and I have been together uh, and just had the pleasure of getting to know that church plant. And through that um, and observing Julio, we mm -hmm. saw a great deal of potential in Julio. And... Yeah. Um, uh, just when he spoke, we saw the rest of the people in Timor Leste listen, and uh, through conversations, realized he had an aspiration for ministry, but not a lot of opportunity to train. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember we were on a plane ride back with Matt and with Austin, and and we said, "Would it be crazy if we tried to bring Julio to our church in America to go to seminary and go through our internship program and learn to be a pastor?" And um, and the Lord was gracious and and brought all the pieces together. Amen. Now let me point out a few things here. First of all, um, short-term missions can be a good thing, a week, two yep. weeks, but primarily the need is for pastor theologians who, it's, who exposit scripture. Uh, there's no need really for Americans to go over and share some sort of experience. What we need are exegetes. Yeah. and exegetes who are also in the local church and pastoring that can go over and teach God's word. Mm. And that's what kind of excites me is that even though both of you are young, of course, everybody's young compared with me now, <laughs> but that you're young, yeah. uh, you saw that. 
Now, another thing that I want to point out that is so important, it wasn't just bringing a young man over to study in a seminary. Uh, as a matter of fact, the seminary was uh, secondary. The, the primary reason for bringing him over was to bring him into the context of a local church where he would see the congregation, he would see the elders, uh, the pastors, shepherding the people, caring for the people, and have an idea that, that theology and doctrine, they have to be lived out. Now, before we go, um, always is dear to my heart when I see someone say, saying, you know, here I am, Lord, send yeah. me. So you're thinking, Austin, yeah. that the Lord has put an earnestness in your heart to also go to Timor-Leste. Yeah, absolutely. So my wife and I have always felt like we were called to the mission field, uh, but we didn't have specifics. There was no area that we felt uh, a pull towards until our church got involved in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, both of us felt we, you know, we want to be working with Muslims. You know, a lot of the last people groups are, you know, Muslim. And so going to Indonesia really expanded our horizons and gave us tangible sort of um, a locale of where the Lord would have us. There's a great need. And then through our trips and getting connected to Timor-Leste, we just saw East Timor as a strategic sending post, not just to reach the people of Dili and Los mm -hmm. Palos and the place, you know, the cities in East Timor, but also Indonesia, all 17,000 yeah. islands. And so one of the greatest needs in Timor-Leste is, I mean, the people are hungry for the Word of God, but they, they want to learn how to read it well. You know, they, they know there are some deficiencies and they, they're, they're hungry, they're craving it, but they're literally saying, teach us. Teach us how to read it well. Teach us how to know God well. Teach us how to just understand these divine oracles from the Lord. And so long term, the goal for my family, you know, sent out by our church here, is to go there and just be involved with Gethsemane Baptist and hopefully open up a seminary and train young men. Um, I mean, they, they want to use the, the weapon well, and we want to have a role in theological education. You know, they would always say in Peru, you know, uh, give me a fish and I eat for a day. Give me a game pole and I'll eat for the rest of my life. Absolutely. And it's, it's not just to teach. It's to teach men how to expound mm -hmm. the scriptures and for those pastors to teach men and women how to expound mm -hmm. the scriptures for yeah. themselves so that they can feed upon God's word. Because, again, it is about our relationship with Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit and, and through the word of God. Yeah. And it's so very important. Now, I want to say something. Many of you may be thinking, but Heart Cry supports indigenous missionaries. Yes, we do. And, um, and we feel that that is a, a great ministry if done properly according to the scriptures. But we've always said this. There is still the greatest need for cross-cultural missionaries. There are some areas where there's no really strong biblical autonomous church that's sending out missionaries and holding them accountable in different parts of the world. And, and so there's always going to be need for Christians who live in places where they're privileged. And what do I mean by privileged? Where they have the word of God, they have uh, books, teaching, seminary, where they can be trained. Those people are still in need on the foreign field. One of the things I always said about missions is you just look at what's in your hand and look at what's not in your brother's hand. Yeah. And what I mean by that is uh, I've served in some places where, where the only person that had a Bible was the pastor. And so what's in my hand? The ability to get them Bibles. Yeah. Or where someone has truly become converted and even started a church in the middle of the jungle with no training, no help, What's in my hand? Well, in my hand is theological training yeah. that we can give to them. How to expound scripture, how to truly pastor, how to understand our scriptures in light of 2,000 years of, of church history. And um, so I want you to know that, that here at Heart Cry, we are all about supporting indigenous missionaries when they can be sent out through biblical and mature local churches, trained, held accountable, um, supervised in the field but there's so many places where that doesn't exist mm -hmm. and we still need more than ever cross-cultural missionaries all right well thank you so much it's been such a great privilege to listen to all three of you and just remember the harvest is great 
we're called to go into all the nations and preach the gospel. Do you want to live for something that lasts forever? It's the kingdom of heaven. And it's the souls of men and women. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Updates from the Field. Visit heartcrymissionary.com to view our other productions and to find out more about Heartcry Missionary Society.